In this video, we'll see how to use Tribe Checkout to let users buy specific items inside the WeWeb app, using also a Xano backend, because as you'll see, we'll need a backend to handle the whole payment flow. And so let's look at a specific example. So let's say I'm on the WeWeb app right here, and this page is accessible only to authenticated users. And on this page, they have like the list of the items um, my my shop is proposing, for example, so t-shirts with their prices. And when they click on the buy button, they're redirected back to a Stripe checkout page. They can enter their details and their address, then use their credit card to pay. So it's a fake credit card, obviously, because we are on Stripe test mode. As you can see here, then pay. And once it's done, they are redirected back to a success page on the WeWeb app where they can see their name and your others was successful. So that's what we'll build together during this video. So the first thing to do is actually go to Stripe in your accounts and go search for products so product catalog and here you see the products currently available so do not look at this one this is for next video for subscriptions but what we'll do is that we'll create a new product which is actually linked to a price that people can pay as a one-off so one-off is like you pay for it you get it so mostly for e-commerce or marketplaces for example so i will add a new product i will call it pink t-shirt, upload an image, oh, sorry, it's actually this one, now I need, I need to enter my password, then here I will have to set the, the price. So a product can have multiple price, prices, but for this specific example, we only have one price, which is the one-off and the amount. So you can select the currency here. I will let it in Euro and I will say that it's, for example, 12. And then I add the product. Okay. So now my product is in Stripe. So people are able to pay for it. The thing is we can't use Stripe as a backend. It's not made for this, so I will need to duplicate this product inside my backend, which is a Xano backend. So first thing is that I will open my product, and here I will go inside my Xano backend. So as you can see here, I've got a product table with the name of each product, the price, the image, and then I also store the Stripe product ID, the Stripe payment link, and the Stripe price ID. So I do this so that WeWeb is able to get them back. And that's actually best practice is that when you use backend, you should store some Stripe data inside it to be able to redirect your user to the right checkout page or use the right payment link, these kind of things. So I will create a new record. I will type the same name, so pink t-shirts. The price was 12. Then I will use my image. And for the Stripe product ID, I will copy this product ID here. For the price ID, so the price is here. So you can have multiple prices for products. So you see here, price for pink t shirts, and I've got the ID here that I will copy paste and now I will have to create a payment link why because I want people to be able to go to a Stripe checkout page that is hosted on Stripe and actually it's really cool it's really useful to do this because Stripe handles all the payment flow uh, has the page has a really great UX and most of the time it's really enough you, you shouldn't do like the the payment flows yourself except if you have really uh, strong convictions to do it, but I would recommend always to begin with Stripe, Stripe checkout pages. So to do this, I will create a payment link here. 
So you see Stripe is telling me how the page, the page will look like. So you can let user adjust the quantity, for example, if they want. Uh, you can ask to um, collect their billing and shipping address, edit the countries, add the shipping rates, uh, if you're having an e-commerce website, um, and have multiple advanced options. So we won't go all over them, but I would suggest you to check Swipe Docs because it's really well explained. And for the after payment, you can have Stripe payment confirmation page, but I will redirect the user to uh, our own success page. So as you see here in WeWeb, I've got my checkout confirmation page. We'll get into more details later on how it works. But basically, I will copy this um, URL here, so from the editor. Obviously, when it's in production, you should copy paste the URL from the production app here and not the editor. And one thing I will do though is add a query string because Stripe will need to send the session ID. So how it works is that when you pay, Stripe will create a session for the specific payment with the user. And when it Stripe redirects back to your website, your app, it will send back the session ID that you can use to get back the payment and the, the customer, for example. And to do this, uh, it's in their documentation, but you need to use a query string with a variable. So how it works is that I've got my query string, which if I remember well, is here, uh, session ID, yeah. So I called it session ID. So I will add it at the end of my URL with the question mark session underscore ID. And then to ask Stripe to uh, replace it with the current session ID, you need to use uh, a variable inside curly braces. Actually, it's explained in that documentation here. So if we click on learn more, you see you can include the checkout session ID using this curly brace variable. So that's what I will do here. So at the end of my URL, I will add this. Okay. And now I will create the link. Once it's li this link is done, I will copy it to my Zano table. And that should be okay. Now, let's get back to my WeWeb app. The thing you'll need are actually to add an authentication mechanism. Why? Sorry, it's here. Why it's actually to be able to pass the customer email, so the authenticated user's email, to the checkout page so that it's pre-filled. Because as you saw, when I was paying before, my email was automatically pre-filled. So I added Xano authentication. I won't get into details on how to do it here because we've got nice videos for it on our academy and on our YouTube channel. But basically I've got, um, I'm using Xano authentication with a user table here. And you see, uh, also some things that we'll get into much more details in the next videos to have also the customer ID, the Stripe customer ID inside the user. But I've got my users here and my checkout page is actually set up in a way that it's for authenticated users only. So they can use the buy button only when they are authenticated. And I also added the Xano data source plugin so that I can add my products um, collection. And my collection is actually a Xano dynamic collection using the endpoint to get the data from this table. So normally, if I update this here, so you see here, I get my products. And if I continue, now I have my pink t-shirt with the ID, the name, the price, the product ID, the Stripe payment link, and the price ID, and the image. And how I've done it is that I've got a repeating um, list here with all my items, and I bound the image here, the price from my database using, you see, 
uh, concatenation to add arrows, the name. And what's interesting is the buy button. So it's actually a WeWeb button, but the link. Um, oops, sorry. The link here is actually a URL which is bound to the Stripe payment link. So you see the payment link here that we we added to the database. So actually this one, which is this one gets added inside WeWeb. And I also add a query string with question mark pre-filled email. So you can send some pre-filled stuff to Stripe and it's also explained in their documentation. So you can add, for example, the email, the name or some UTMs. And for the email, so you, you should use prefile emails equals and then I send the email from my authenticated user email here. Oop, let's get back. And as you see, the, the final URL is actually my Stripe checkout. So buy button with prefilled email equals the email of the current user. So when I click on this button, I land on this checkout page and you see it's linked to my pink t-shirt because it's the right one. And the email from the user is prefilled here. Okay. And now, we want to get the, so we actually have a new product. People can pay for it. Um, they can pay for using their credit card and payment methods. You can manage everything in the payment links option. So I will let you check because there are many options for many countries uh, like Klarna or, you know, PayPal, Google Pay, Apple Pay uh, cards. So everything is here. But the last thing we'll, we'll need is actually to create the uh, success page. So to do this, simply create a blank page in WeWeb. And I created it already that I, I named checkout confirmation page. And this page, you can tailor it the way you want. For me, it's just uh, displaying the name of the person and your order was successful. So actually to, to show it to you, Let's create a fake payment using my new product. So the pink t-shirt. Let's enter my name again. Let's enter an address. For the credit card, you can use the Stripe fake credit, fake credit card when you're in test mode, which is actually 4242 42 all the time. And then you can enter anything you want in Montfier and CVC. So do this and it will automatically accept the payment and it's a fake payment so nothing will happen i mean in test mode everything is fake um and then pay i don't want to save this card and you see here my uh i'm being redirected to my um success page and the session id query string was replaced with the session ID from the current session. And here I've got Quentin, your order was successful because I'm simply using the details from my Stripe session to uh, display them. But to get this Stripe session, so actually the session looked like this. You see it's a big object with many things like the payment. You can see the customer details, uh, the dates, the invoice everything. And to get this, you need a backend. That's why we also need Zano to do this. So the way I set up it in WeWeb is that this page is empty, but only it uses a variable, which is a query string variable that I call session ID. So that will get back the, the session ID actually. But you see a query string variable in WeWeb is equals to the value it has in the URL. So because here I've got a query string session underscore ID and this variable is called session underscore ID, it gets back the value, which is the striped uh, session ID. So, and to get back the current session, because we only have the ID, we need to trigger an pay a page workflow that gets the striped session from Zano. 
and we are sending it the session ID and from it, if I test it in the response, sorry, data session, I get my whole session. And I will show you I've done it in Xano. So this endpoint is in my API Stripe uh, group and I call it success. So it's simply a get with the session ID as a parameter. And what it does is that it does um, API requests to a get request to the Stripe API v1 checkout sessions. So there are whole docs is here. So if you Google get Stripe session API, retrieve a session, you will get the API call here. It's actually this API call. And why it should be on the back end is because it's using the private API key, as you can see here. So if I use the curl, maybe it's more explicit. And you send it at the end of the URL, the session ID, and you get back the whole session. So that's what I do in Xano. Basically, I use the URL, then I concatenate this URL using the session ID that I got from uh, my API call from WeWeb. And then I add uh, my token as an authorization header that I base64 encode. And this tri pri private test API key is actually an environment variable that I created in Xano using my Stripe private key that if you forgot, you can find in Stripe using API keys here. So it's this secret key that you should use. Okay. And then it returns the session and I send back the whole session to WeWeb as the session objects. So then in WeWeb, I get back this session object. And what I do is that I change the, the, the value of a variable, a global variable that I also call session, and I bound it to the results data session. So here, the whole session that I got back from my previous API call from Xano. And that's it. You've got your confirmation page. And that actually worked because if we go back to Stripe and we go to payments, for example, so if I search for our payments are just here, you see that the last one, um, which is this one, is actually for a pink t-shirt and the customer was Quentin D, so me. So as we are using checkout pages without sending a specific uh, customer, it's, uh, Stripe is creating what we call guest customers. So you can't edit them and basically you've got their name and their emails, but that's all. In the next video, we'll see how to uh, link a user, an authenticated user to a Stripe customer and basically have more information and like sync both of them. But for a, uh, a POC or like simple e-commerce website, it's totally sufficient. And you see that a pink t-shirt was bought. And if I go to um, customers, you see that Quentin D is here with all the things I bought before doing this video <laughs> with the payment methods. So the fake the credit card and yeah, all the, the things I uh, paid for. And then if you have a website, an e-commerce website, for example, on, uh, or you're selling services, you just have to connect to Stripe and check what was bought, bought by your users to send them. In the next video, we'll also see how to use webhooks to automate this, to send back the payments process, that the payment process was done to your backend so that you can automate this. But for a small puck, it's totally enough. And that's how it works, basically.